Hello and welcome to what is another Press Out Australia Reacts here on E3 Week. Kevin and I are looking at another trailer here, uh, this being gameplay of Fallout 4, which is another highly anticipated game here at Press Start. Uh, Kevin, we're seeing the, the character creation at the moment. Was there any sort of changes here that stood out to you or appealed to you at all? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually kind of happy in this regard. Um, they kind of made... I, I did not like the sliders from, uh, you know, the old Fallout and um, Elder Scrolls. Scrolls games. Um, I really like the new, you know, you kind of just scroll through mm -hmm. and just make changes wherever you want. Um, I think that's really cool. Yeah, it looks pretty simple and intuitive, doesn't it? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and sliders, you know, there is kind of like a, a distance of uh, or a level of removal from that in your character, but just sort of being able to tweak their face here and there is, is quite cool. Um, and I like the sort of idea of switching between the, the husband and wife and then having your child kind of created out, out of their, yeah. their combination, which, which is quite cool. I honestly thought beforehand that there was no there was not going to be a female uh, protagonist option available so when he re Todd Howard revealed that you could play as a female like I, I lost it I'm like I was so happy because um, that's like an integral part of the Fallout experience mm, absolutely um, so what, what, we're watching uh, obviously the the game starts but prior to the uh, nuclear apocalypse uh, in, in 2077. Um, so you, you live out kind of a, a, a normal life momentarily um, prior to the mutually assured destruction. Uh, do, you, do you like that as an introduction? Does that appeal to you at all? I really do, but I, I also hope that there'll be adequate setup for your family. Um, I don't want to just have to like, spend like half an hour with them and then they die and then I don't really care. Mm. I want I want a lot of emotion invested into the prologue. I assume this is the prologue, um, and you know I'll really feel something when if they die. I'm not sure if they die, but yeah, um, yeah. I assume that... a little unclear there, weren't they? Yeah, so you sort of disappear just... into this vault for two hundred years, and they maybe allude to the fact you're in cryo sleep or something. But it was a little puzzling. Absolutely, yeah. I, I assume they're dead. I'm going off the fact that they're dead, and then. The story kicks off, you know, 200 years later. That's when you wake up, or your, your character wakes up. But mm -hmm. um, I'm going to keep a close eye out on the story. Actually, I'm not going to keep a close eye out because I don't want to be spoiled with the story. Yeah, no, couldn't agree more. I, and and they did, like, during the, the showing at the, the Bethesda conference yesterday, they did kind of avoid, try to avoid spoilers as much as possible. Um, and obviously there's a lots of pivotal, pivotal things that happen in the early stages of Fallout games as well. Absolutely. What I thought was really cool, uh, this is a bit uh, later in the video, um, is that your voiced character ac actually can say the, the name of your baby. Because mm. apparently, mm. apparently they recorded thousands of different names. So, because I assume the name is randomly generated, not that you can pick it yourself. Because, yeah. Um, but the fact that you can say your baby's name is kind of like a neat little touch. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll see as this trailer progresses. There's nice little attention to details, and they really are doing more than just kind of like an updated Fallout 3. There's, uh, they've obviously been been kicking back, or kicking around a whole bunch of ideas over the, the six years, really, since Fallout 3 came out, and they started designing concepts for this. Um, they've evidently been been saving a bunch of different ideas to integrate them into this. So Absolutely. we're just at the, the now, point in the trailer now where we sort of leave the vault for the first time and we yep, see yep. the open world for what it is. Do you want to talk me through that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so clearly this is Boston, and everyone already pointed out that it's Boston. Um, it looks a lot better than Fallout 3, even though it's running on the same, uh, well, a similar version of the creation engine. Uh, mm. I assume it's an, up it's an upgraded version of the creation engine, engine that was used in Skyrim. Um, it looks, I don't know, a lot of people have been nitpicking that it doesn't look that good in terms of graphical fidelity, but I just think it looks absolutely stunning. Um, yeah. Like, I, I, I can't see how it doesn't. The, the colors are absolutely amazing. Like, just the fact that they've used the full color palette makes the game look so much better than Fallout 3, which was all sort of green and gray and dark, which made sense for, you know, the apocalyptic setting, but 
here we're seeing another you know apocalyptic setting and it look it still makes sense in the context of the game but it looks about a thousand times better and there's yeah and there's significantly more draw distance as well you know fallout 3 has kind of got that green smog that lingers over everything and sort of acts like a filter to your vision and all that's just stripped away um and it still feels kind of gloomy and and broken and fractured but in a yeah and just a lot more of a sort of visually appealing way if that makes sense at all absolutely um, here we're, we're talking with codsworth who's your your personal robot and we're getting some of the sort of dynamic conversation contextual conversation that was being introduced for uh, fallout 4 um so apparently you've kind of got different kind of dialogue choices and they sort of affect the, the the how the game plays out much like a telltale would game would perhaps um i think todd uh, uh said that um you know at, at any point you can just walk away from a conversation or you could just pull out your gun and shoot him in the head uh that's quite is that a welcome change for you do you do you like that that's been introduced uh not exactly to be honest um i'm getting a lot of um reminders of mass effect or any Bioware game in um, recent memory um, right. with the whole, you know, you've got your four dialogue choices, you map to the four buttons, and, you know, obviously you'll have interrupts or, you know, bad bad choices or good choices. But um, oh, no, I, I really like the old school, just you've got your whole list of options, um, no voice to it. Now now I feel like it's going to be a little bit streamlined because... It's just the voice, the amount of voice acting that has to go into this game is just going to be way too much. Um, I don't know. I'm a bit pessimistic about the whole voice act. Uh, you have a player character being fully voice acted as well. I always, yeah. Yeah. I always used my Fallout character as a, like an avatar of myself. And I just imagine me saying the things like the dialogue choices instead of having a fully voiced person. Hmm. Yeah, I can I can understand understand your reason for that. I mean, you know, Fallout Three certainly do feel like you embody your character and and they are your own. Where when it's voice act, that's kind of taken away from you. Um, I personally, I think I need to see how how it works. Um, if if I do feel like there's weight to my 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 choices in, in in dialogue and whatnot, and I feel like I can sort of shape and or mold my character to suit to suit my own ideas or or whatever um that i don't think it'll really bother me but i i totally understand your opinion um and i can imagine there'll be some people that share that with you you are you glad to have the vats system back <laughs> oh absolutely i love vats um one really interesting thing to notice that it doesn't freeze time anymore it just goes into a sort of a super slow motion style yeah. so the old fallouts well the fallout 3 in new vegas it was it just froze time completely and mm. then it kind of just, you know, you played the cinematic of the gun shots. Um, now it's, I, I think it's a little bit better. It makes the combat a bit more fast paced instead of having, you know, the game freeze and you have an infinite amount of time to make your shots. Um, so I don't know. It might, 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 might make the game a bit more challenging because I do remember that's being very, very overpowered. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm happy to see the return of that's and the little tweaks in the formula. Mm, yeah, me too. Um, initially, Vats kind of didn't appeal to me at all when I played when I played Fallout Three. Um, I'm very much someone that likes you know action games and real time kind of stuff. Um, as soon as things become like turn based or or whatever, I sort of kind of grow distant from them. But with Vats, I it, playing Fallout Three recently in the lead up to this, you can you can see my Let's Play over on the YouTube channel currently. Um, I really kind of grew to appreciate it more um i uh i i like the sort of fact that you know the time stands still and you could if you land the right shot you can watch that bullet sort of hurtle across the room um so yeah i'm personally i'm glad to see that's back and the, the gameplay looks a lot more solid regardless um including including that uh we're seeing now in the trailer the um the settlement construction mechanics that they've introduced in Fallout 4, which is obviously a, a new mechanic in into the Fallout franchise. Uh, what are your initial impressions of this? Oh, uh, 100% positive, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, this looks absolutely so, surprisingly. amazing. Surprisingly. Are you 100% positive about anything, Kevin? <laughs> Ever? <laughs> it's a first, i got to admit. <laughs> um but no it looks really sort of um it looks just so cool you, you build your own settlement 
Um, I was I was gonna be happy if you were just building your own home, but yeah, they they didn't they didn't stop there. They went all out. Like you've you've got, they've got a little tower defense mini game where like raiders attack your settlement and you've got to defend it. Um, mm. and I think that's really cool. And I I the, one of the main parts of my Fallout experience is picking up random crap around the world and having just putting it somewhere because it's just. It's just this little RPG thing that I do. I just have to pick up everything. Mm. And the fact that you can now use stuff like all that scrap metal and, you know, rubbish and cans and um, pipes and anything, it's, you know, it makes my worthless picking up worth something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and certainly with the, with the crafting, um, which, you know, obviously go, expands beyond the, the settlement construction here. It, suddenly everything's got a purpose, as, as you're saying. Um and God, I'm going to be just lost in this game for uh, probably about 200 years, the amount of time that he's stuck <laughs> in that vault. Because um, aside from obviously the main missions and, and the side missions and everything else you can discover in the world, if you can like build your own settlement and then just grow your settlement and defend it and all that, I could spend hours doing that. Like That's a game in itself, in my, in my opinion. Um, absolutely, and they absolutely. talk about kind of like adjacent settlements and like creating trade networks and and whole sorts of stuff. And it's like, what is this game? It's just just mind boggling how much they've crammed in this. Absolutely. Now they mentioned that you could set up like trade networks with other settlements. Is that going to be online with other players or surely not? AI? Like <laughs> surely not. <laughs> that that just seems ludicrously ambitious. Um, you know, it's got to be like some sort of NPC sort of generator thing. You'd have thought, but absolutely, yeah. Like, yeah, it, it just kind of adds to the this kind of feeling of a living, breathing world, um, which is what I love so much about The Witcher. Um, and if they can, you know, replicate that in any way, it's just awesome. Well, we're just getting into that crafting set, uh, crafting. Uh, that you were talking about earlier, where you can sort of find these different components in, in random things. Um, even if we just look at the screws here, you can like turn out screws from a typewriter, a toy car, a globe, handcuffs. There's just going to be so many like random bits of crap that you stumble across that if you don't Absolutely. know how to use correctly, um, I just, yeah, I just had going to like, go in the trash. Yeah, um, really, really clever and really authentic. Yeah. I mean, we got a little taste of that in New Vegas where you could create your own ammo and stuff out of scrap metal and, like, mm. bits of rubbish. Um, but the way they're going with this in Fallout 4, it's going to be really, really in-depth. You know, you've got to collect the right amount of materials um, and you've got to do a lot of, like, scrounging and looting and traveling and exploring. It's just, it's just a really good, you know, emphasis on world exploration. Mm. And how about the uh, the weapon customization as well? So we've been told that there's 50 base weapons and then 700 customization options. Um, so obviously just, you know, almost infinite possibilities. Um, and they give you a taste of just the kind of crazy stuff you can you can create um, just by shaping, you know, one sort of pistol into a rifle or attaching saw blades onto a baseball bat. Um, yeah. It's kind of, it reminded me a lot of Dead Rising. Oh yeah, it does with the whole weapon crafting system. It does. It does uh, have a sh few shades of uh, Dead Rising in it, definitely. Yeah, and the um, the char the character customization starts to get a bit crazy as well. Wearing different suits and your male character wearing a dress or whatnot. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, that's gonna be the first thing I do is put on you know a bright pink dress and go running around with a baseball bat with saws attached to them. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, it, so it, that whole um, like humor sort of filled wasteland. It's a part of the old Fallout's. Like I remember Fallout One and Two used to have this really dark black humor to it, which Fallout Three I felt kind of lacked. Um, and the fact they're going all out with the crazy customization, I feel like they're mm -hmm. going, you know, they're going back to those roots where it's, it's like, hey, you know, it's the end of the world, but you can still have fun. Yeah, well, there's that there's that quote that brilliantly sums it up. It's like, "Are you ready to just fuck shit up?" And then he says to the dog, um, "Yeah." What What do you make of that that relationship between your player and the and the dog? Is that going to be something that interests you at all? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Not knowing how they set it up, that dog's meet with a very very tragic ending. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good. <laughs> but look, I'm kind of happy to see the companion system return, and like dog meat was one of my favorite parts of Fallout Three. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, they'll focus a bit more between the relationship of those two. 
in the yeah. story. And I like the fact that you can sort of issue him commands and you know play fetch with him or whatever. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just all these little things that they seem to be adding to this game that just increase value. And you know, maybe they're not for everyone. Um, and as they said, like the stuff like the settlement construction, you don't have to do it. There is no reason why you have to do it. It's just there if you want it. Um, mm. which is which is fantastic. Um and and that's that extends to the uh, the mobile kind of devices as well. We uh, we saw that Fallout Shelter game that was announced um, to be coming out that evening. Um, I've had a bit of a play on that, and that's a lot of fun. Um, but then there's also the Pit Boy Companion app, which of course comes with the uh, which can of course be slotted into an actual Pit Boy that comes with a certain edition of the game, um, a certain edition I have already pre-ordered. I'm proud to say. <laughs> um, but it's just, you know, there's, they sort of admitted themselves that this is kind of like a stupid sort of novelty gimmick thing, but it's just the best kind of no stupid novelty gimmick thing and something exactly. that's just fun. <laughs> and that seems to be what this game is embodying, which is just great. It's just really kind of a breath, like a breath of fresh air to see them just embracing the goofiness and just giving players what they want. And that is freedom, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm really loving their no-holds-barred approach just to making this game. You can tell that they spent a lot of time on it and they really wanted to show audiences what they had in store. And that that uh, Pip-Boy, uh, man, I've never been more tempted to pre-order a game, like, honestly. Ah, uh, you've managed to resist, have you? Uh, so far, I have. There's still a good, you know, couple months left, but... Like it's it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if you can hold out till November when this game, of course, comes out. Yeah, it comes out November tenth on the same day as Tomb Raider, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, we know who's going to win that fight, though. I'm sure. Thanks for joining us today, Kevin. And uh, would be sure to stick around with everything Press Start's doing, covering E3 this week at Press Start AU. Adios. Adios. See you later. <laughs>